Hello, welcome back, welcome back. Well, I say welcome back, welcome to Yarn Lane, those of you that are just joining us now. Oh, it's the last day of the Sewing Street party. Uh, we're going out with a bang. We've had Wendy Orlando with us all morning today and she's going to be our guest for Yarn Lane. So it, please do take part in, of course, all of the shenanigans, all of the party. Incredible, oh, yeah, shenanigans. We've got so much going on today. It's crazy. We've got two prize draws, which you are entered into. Don't worry. I know that Yarn Lane hasn't been going a year, but we're, of course, including all of our lovely Yarn Lane customers into the prize draws. So there's a daily prize draw to win lots of sewing goodies, creative grid rulers. And then there's also a weekly prize draw, which will reveal the winner tomorrow. So if you're shopping on the Yarn Lane website or on the show today, you're all entered into the prize draws. Now, we're going to be talking about a book which is already selling very very quickly on pre-order i know all i keep hearing at the moment is about granny squares hayley bryant who's our marketing manager she is addicted to making granny squares this is a brilliant granny square book now um i know that i'm going to get a telling off in a minute from wendy about my knitting but she said to me vic try crochet have a go with crochet i have done crochet before and i've done crochet with um uh but with on our sister channel jewelry maker so with monofilament or with with a really light wire it's nice to do with um little gemstones but it, amazing to be able to make blankets i mean this book i'm going to just shimmy this over slightly very carefully very carefully <laughs> because I did hear Wendy say oh as soon as Vic's come in that's just going to be gone isn't it that's not going to stay in that lovely pyramid you've got such beautiful projects in here from um, cube storage seat covers bolster cushions blankets it's just so classic even lampshades even uh, you know jar uh, plant pot holders um, this just so cool and doing it in different colors as well changes the look completely I love the hexy the hexy is gorgeous and, and some of these in variegated yarn would look amazing so this bag this is a string shopping bag which Wendy's made and it uses just one ball of your yarn just one of your yarn so i mean if you do this in variegated it's going to look absolutely amazing that's what wendy's done but um there's so many brilliant projects in here we've got some great bundles of yarn for you the stool covers are fantastic aren't they love that absolutely love it so not only do you have obviously all the photographs you also have obviously step-by-step -step instructions and patterns of how to do all of these projects um, it's a lovely book and it's $14.99 just $14.99 today is this brand new in today no this is the one that we got back in stock because it was so popular the first time around with Wendy um, it was back on the 27th of Jan actually that we uh, that we launched this and it completely sold out so a granny square you can have lots of different designs of Granny Square and you can see here all of the different sample designs. Uh, these are, uh, use these drawings of Granny Square designs uh, for your own colour and design experiments. So you can photocopy this to colour in and cut and arrange into combinations of different likings. Um, you can duplicate ones, you can just make a, a sampler of each of them and stitch them together. There is so much that you're going to be able to do. Fourteen pounds and ninety-nine pence. So that's the book. Now we've also got some variegated threads, as I said, some variegated um, yarns, as we said. So the blues that you just spotted are amazing. It's one thing that sort of is daunting, I find, is changing colours uh, mid-flow. So if you're if you're knitting or if you're you're doing crochet to change colour. I mean, I was watching the show Yarn Lane the other day and there was the lady um, who was saying, well, try it with bobbins and uh, it's actually really simple to swap colours, but it just does not go in my head. So having variegated colours eliminates that completely, but you get such different looks each time. Uh, Kat said, you know, when you mix all of your paints together in a paint, in paint pots, where are you going with this? You're left with streaks, different tones, different colours. So that's what it reminds her of. That's what it reminds her of. So in each of these, you have 100 grams. 100 grams of your yarn. Um, you get all three of these. All three for £12.99. Now we also have the more neutral colours. 
this will be really nice in the string bag actually. You can see it behind me on the uh, on the shawl there. You can see it behind me on the. Uh, when do you call it a pirate style? Do you call it a pirate? No, you didn't call it cowboy. Cowboy style shawl, <laughs> not pirate. Uh, you know the cowboy style shawl. Twelve pound ninety nine, and you've got all three colours. This is your double knit cotton soft crush, and I must say it is so 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 soft. And the colours are beautiful. £12.99. Now, this is still the granny stitch. So even though we're not doing it as a square, it's the same stitch, which we're going to talk through. And I'll ask Wendy in a moment. But can you see the, um, the, the, the scarf that Wendy's made isn't in squares. It's the same stitch, but it's not in squares. We will find out how we do it. £12.99. And then the pink and green. Okay, Kat's calling this fruit salad. I can see where you're going with that. Uh, this is your cotton soft crush again. It's double knit. It's super, super soft. It's got from greens into pinks into blush colours. Oh, I love that. £12.99 for your pack of three yarns. Uh, and they are beautifully soft. 100 gram, double knit, ready to go. We also have a couple of miniature bundles. Right, I'm saying miniature. They're miniature but mighty. My word, they go a long way. You will see that in just a moment. So, oh, there we go. Um, so, this one will go such a lovely, uh, such a long way. It's beautiful quality. It's Mariner. It's five ninety nine. No way. You've wrecked the pyramid. Oh, have I, what have I done to the pyramid? It's all there you go. They're all 10 grams. They're great to be able to try different colours. Oh, sorry. I'm all sad now. There's 20 different colours for 5 99 Are you kidding? Please tell me we've got hundreds of these. Oh, do you? Granny Squares are all different colours. These would be brilliant. They're 5 99 and we will show you in just a moment how far they go. But I just wanted to um, show you how crazy that price point is. And they are Mariner as well. They're absolutely beautiful quality. And we always know how um, popular Mariner is. So do make the most of that. We'll talk about these in a moment with Wendy. If you do want to give it a go, what a great way to get loads of colours um, all in your stash. Great on. quality for £5.99. Now we also have the pastel. Can you put your camera over there, Emma, or not? Uh, just because, uh, just because I, I don't want to pull them all into the centre. Uh, just these ones. These are so cute. Oh, no. Oh, you can. Ooh. Oh, well done. Look at this. Oh, they're springtime, Easter colours. Are these the colours? Look what you can make. Look at what you can make using all of those colours. Oh, Five pounds ninety nine, five ninety nine. Oh no, I'm definitely going to lose this pyramid. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful colour. Uh, just five ninety nine. Super soft as well. Now, if you want to make exactly this, we do have the instructions. <gasps> They're Wendy's instructions. They are Wendy's official instructions. So these are the Crafty Company, Crafty Co. Uh, I always say that, the Crafty Co. You can find her on Facebook, find her on Instagram, find her online. Today, your pattern is 3 dollars Thank you for that birthday special, Wendy, because that is an absolute bargain. 3 dollars If you want to get your lovely yarn at 5 dollars plus your pattern at 3 dollars you can make that entire blanket, which is so lovely, absolutely adorable for £3.99. Now we've had a message in from Eliza. Um, the Marini yarn is so soft. It really is. It's beautiful, beautiful quality. Um, so all of your pattern is there, written by Wendy Orlando for just £3.99. Now, Okay, main focus today is this amazing book, which is back in stock. So that's going to be your main graphics. But Wendy, um, this is so exciting because I love it. It, it was back in January that you um, you were on air launching this. But 
I mean, they it just goes such a long way. Granny squares are really, really popular. We didn't realise how popular they were, and I've had loads of people message me saying thank you because they tried to do it and just gave up, which you should never do because just keep crochet is one of those crafts that it's really difficult mm -hmm. until you can do it. It's like most things, isn't it? Okay, right. But it's all about getting your tension right, and there's so many things to think yeah. about. But once you've got it, and I was mentoring a lady in America, and she was all ready to give up, and I went, You will get that light bulb moment. One yeah. day it will just click. Yeah. And she messaged me to say, I've done it, I can do oh, it now. Brilliant. So it was amazing. So I always say, Start with a granny square. If you're trying to crochet in rows, yeah, well, a bit like you found out with your knitting, if you don't get your stitch count right, yeah. you can have like wavy lines, which is great if that's the look you're after. Yeah. But it's very difficult, and a lot of people think, no, I need to start in rows. Granny square's the way to go. Crochet, I've heard as well, is a lot easier to sort of correct, whereas knitting, you can go rows and rows and not realise that oh, you've I've got a hole. Oh, I've been there, done that, yes. But with crochet, you can quite easily correct yourself, can't Really you? easily correct it. If you get to the end of the row and find that you've gone wrong, you just rip it out. I mean, they say to frog it, and it's called frog it because it, you rip it, rip it, and it sounds a bit like <laughs> a frog. So there's a lots of crochet terminology. Yeah, so you, if you do find something wrong, and also on my um, on the YouTube channel, I've got, and it's been qu viewed quite a lot, I've got um, a tutorial if you go wrong, like right down the bottom, because you don't have to rip it all the way back. You can just deal with the piece in question. Right. It's quite scary scary to do it because you literally cut into the stitches and start okay. with that piece but um, yeah it's well worth having a look if you do go wrong. So there's granny square and then there's granny stitch mm. so you don't need to do the granny stitch you in a to, square. You don't so it can be as you can see on the blanket it's a granny stripe in rows. and you can do the granny square Mm -hmm. They call it a granny square because obviously it, you're working in the square and that's where you would normally start. Again, working in a rose is a little bit more difficult. So you would start with the square? Definitely start okay. with the square. It doesn't really matter about your tension on the square. Um, with you're working with uh, rows, then your tension is quite important because as I say, if you do one row really tight and then one, it's mm -hmm. going to be really wobbly at the side. Whereas if your tension's a little bit out on your granny square, yes, it, it will look a bit messy mm. but it's it will soon write itself but that one I don't know if you can if you can get it down yeah. it is granny stitch but it's in a triangle so oh, this yeah. is my absolute this is where my passion is um, is corner to corner so you start off in the corner Right, okay, so and you start off here you start off and with one increase, stitch. increase, increase, increase. Ah. That, I mean, you saw my blanket this morning that I've made in the, in the corner to corner, yeah. and that's made in exactly the same way. You start off in the corner, and then you increase, and then you go back in again. And the beauty of that is, when you do a granny square, you're very much determined that it, it is a square. Mm -hmm. There is also a method, and I'm, I'm hoping to, I would love to bring that to you again, where you can actually do a rectangle, and that just means you start a little bit different. So you start with um, more stitches in a rectangular shape. Right. But with a granny square, you're very much, as I say, determined if you just carry on and on and on, unless you want to to put them all together and I'm going to hopefully show you the join as you go method today because okay. ends are my bugbear. I, I hate weaving in ends, you all have to do it. Yeah. But that one is great corner to corner because you just keep going and then when you get to the width that you want your blanket to be, yeah. you stop and then you just either decrease to create the square or yeah. you just continue up one side to have a rectangle. So Can you do that with knitting as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Ah, I, yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I've got um, and, and, and an, I've got an easy blanket on on my blog again that you literally just start nice. and then when you get to where you want then you just go back in again. So this is using the variegated, isn't it? It looks like you've used three or four different colours in that, but it's all just one. Uh, I am. Um, I have two things that I love working with more than anything, mm -hmm. and one of that, believe it or not, is jute. I love working in jute, which is like the garden twine, yeah. because you can create so many wonderful things with that. But I also love working with cotton, because it's very, very hard wearing. Yeah, it's one of the more difficult yarns to work with because it's this splits, is cotton. It's cotton, so ah. it, it splits so bad. Yeah, if you, it's it's cotton soft crush. Um, cotton is. I wouldn't say to a to someone who's only starting out in the crochet world to work with cotton. Absolutely throw that method out of the book. This is incredible. It didn't split once on me. Oh, brilliant. I've never had a cotton so soft as working with this. And also with that one, with the one that you um, have got the, the cowboy, what I called it. I couldn't think what it was the called. The cowboy scarf, yeah. yeah. Um, I went up a hook size in that. Okay. And it's really fluid. 
Right. So it's really, really soft. And again, you'll see in a moment with the bag that we've done, um, it's a really big hook. Right. So just again, the you'll see on here that it tells you the hook size and the needle size. That is just a guide. You right. can do whatever you like with it. Oh, that's good. The only thing is if you're working something to size, mm -hmm. you do need to do really what they tell you to do. Yeah. Because they've made patterns with swatches to a specific size. And if you just change the yarn and the hook size, it's not going to come out the right, right. size. That makes but sense. for something like a bag or a blanket, it doesn't matter. So for three, how far will this go? How many... Um, that took, cotton that took did it take two, two, two to do that one, okay. and then this one took one. Oh, so you I could still, do the short and the back. I'm still struggling to think that that took one because that just is a lot Can of I, bag for one. I, I love have this it, bag, I? by the way. This is so boho beachy. It's so cool. It's really on trend, and that is again using the variegated thread, uh, using the variegated cotton. Um, it's amazing, and that's in the floral colourway, uh, twelve pound ninety nine. So you could make a shawl and a bag with just but again, one bundle. It depends on your tension, because okay. um, if you've got yeah. really, really loose tension and your hook size. So I, I should have weighed this before I come on just to check it was, but I I've made it last week, so I'm I think it was. I got them all out in the pattern, mm -hmm. and you'll see in the book. Let me just show you so you can see. So the book, yes, the, the book is brilliant, isn't it? incredible. Right, so this is what I've made. Yep, that's what I've made. Right. In there. Amazing. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So it looks so different in different exactly, colours though. Exactly. But it tells you in here that it needs 600 grams of string. Okay, so you think that you've used a hundred... Uh, no, ten, uh, 10 small balls, um, but then it does say... Yes, or 600 grams in total of string. Now, this is going to sound really stupid. It's a bit like what is heavier, a ton of feathers or a ton of bricks. Obviously, they're the same because they're both a ton. 100 grams of cotton, and we're talking like a, a substantial cotton, against 100 grams of like acrylic, yeah. you're going to go much further with the acrylic because each individual strand of the cotton is heavier. Does ah. that make sense? It does make. Well, I think it does. Yeah, because I, it's I still hundred grams though. It is. See, that's that's what yeah. I thought because I thought, oh, I'll make one of those blankets because the blanket um, there uses all the wall, mm -hmm. all the balls of wool in the pack. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I'll make I'll make it with this. And I started to make it, but one ball didn't go anywhere near as a hundred grams of that did. And of ah. course, it would wouldn't do. It's really because interesting. Each strand weighs heavier. Right. So although that weighs 100 grams, it's only got a certain amount of yardage compared to what 100 grams of acrylic ah, would be. Yes, now that makes sense. I'm with you. So, um, yeah, but just just have a play. Okay. Um, because a lot of people um, might even get more out of those. And I just want to show you these packs because last time I used these, I thought, oh, it's not much. This. So these mini, these mini, these mini balls. Mini balls. This is one pack of those balls okay oh so my word. I've got and I made a little whatever it is um, tablet case oh I love that so I made a little tablet case and I put a little zip in yeah out of one bag of wool and this is one bag of balls oh my word 5.99 5.99 I got the little coaster which is you get Depending on what pack you get, I think this one comes with the. I don't, I don't even know what. It comes packs, with the pastel pack. The pastels, right? So that one comes with the bright. So you can see, I've made the little coaster there. Oh, I didn't realise you even get a pattern included as well. You do, yes. And the, these patterns are written in US terms. That's the only difference with those. Okay, so just and all that means, though, um, Vix, is they're both exactly the same stitch. They call it one thing, we call it another. Yeah, so yeah, you I've just have to get yes. your head round yeah. it. Um, I write a everything triple, in you. Yeah, yes. Crochet so, this, yeah. Um, yes, our treble. Treble, that's Our it. treble crochet, we can call it triple if you like, <laughs> um, is obviously different to them, okay. uh, but it's still the same stitch. Right. But they call something different. So you need to, you need to make sure what terms they're in. So you get that. Now, I just wanted to do one square out of one ball of wool. So that is one ball of wool. Okay. You've got 20 balls. So you could make a five by four little Gosh, blanket. Brilliant. How amazing is that? And then we've got like another little, 
That's gorgeous. I absolutely oh, adore that. That is lovely. And then we've got like a little round mandala. Hang on. This is all still out one of one bundle. Pack of wool. Gosh, that's so good one. for five ninety nine. Because you were impressed by just getting that. I was really impressed that you could do that and tablet then, case. Please, please, please ignore my colourway because normally I'd have them all to match. But I just, really cute, I just still. carried on yeah. with what I'd got left till I'd run out. And you got a little scarf as well. And I got a little scarf and a little coaster. Oh my which, word! Which again is in the pack. And so that all of that. Five ninety nine, and it's Marino, which is lovely quality, isn't it? It's unbelievable quality. I'm a huge fan. Each of the yarns have their own place in mm -hmm. in our, in what we do in our projects, uh, but acrylic is a little bit more forgiving. If you do have children, <laughs> when you have children, you can wash it. It's right. very easy to oh, wash. Oh, that's good. So you know, if you have, you, you need wax, yes, you need. <laughs> which you do. Um, need. And the blanket, you do that again with one. One bundle, pack. one pack. So all you need is pack. Fantastic. And you do get, I thought they were two whites, but there is a white and a cream in there. And I have stated it all ah. in the pattern. What I've done with that blanket, again, this is, I just need everything to be perfect. The opposite sides are the same colour. So you won't get enough to do with one ball all the way round. You mm -hmm. have to use two balls. So I've got cream on the sides and white on the top and bottom, but I explain it all in the pattern how Fantastic. to achieve that. So that's brilliant. And then um, you can also, we're now going on to the other um, yarn. You can see, I mean, you can just see how fluid that Ooh, is. Yeah. And you wouldn't normally get that with cotton. Oh, okay. You really would. And I mean, I know you're fairly new to, to yeah. all the yarns yeah, and that. I am. But normally with a cotton, it tends to be a little bit stiffer. Stiff. It's a little bit harder to work with, but this is just so soft. Um, and I just tripled that. I've got a, a trick that um, I do to turn one ball of wool into three strands. So I just did three strands together than that. Oh. But that would make a fantastic plant pot hold, uh, plant to stand yeah, a plant on. Yeah, absolutely. It's brilliant. Really it's really more fun. hard wearing than acrylic. Okay. Um, and it doesn't bobble or fluff like acrylic sometimes has a tendency to do. But it's amazing to work with. Brilliant. So, so yes. Let's learn the techniques then. Right. So what do we need to know? What I'm going to do, I'm going to make this, mm -hmm. but I'm going to make it in um, double knit. When you get your, your balls like this home, do I need to then put them into a ball like yours? You don't. Are these called hanks? They're called, um, they're just balls. They're just balls. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are called cakes. Cakes. And we've had loads of them this yes. week, haven't we? You, I don't know if you saw a few weeks ago, I was allowed, I was let loose on the Swift. Oh, uh, oh yeah. So I've, I've got one that. anyway at home. So I turn everything into a cake okay. because it comes out the center and it's I've got a dog yeah. so if there's a ball just flying around the floor or I put it in a cardboard box this is so much easier I um, think they're on the website and they're really good the Swifts aren't they um, no the Swift the Swifts are when for when you have the Hanks yeah okay. it's the one next to it right it's the wall winder and that is like the Rolls Royce that oh. is unbelievable and the beauty of that is as, as I said I work with jute yeah. I can even put my jute on there whereas I'm not able to do with that with the smaller one the smaller ones are perfect for 100 gram balls so okay. uh, but I'm going to be using the um, acrylic because this one I used a 10 millimeter hook which is much much that's bigger, bigger much bigger for the recommended that you would use for that wall right. but that's what gives its fluidity yeah. and also that like string like look which I think is amazing so if I put it into context what does it say on here i've got a 10 millimeter right. one here and i've got a four millimeter here so if i show you the difference in them so right they recommend that you use a four millimeter right so that's this. what they're recommending and this is what wendy's used so you can see the difference in the size and that's the beauty about crochet so that means it comes together a lot quicker i'm guessing uh, i know because um Rebecca messaged me saying, oh, can you just send over a picture of the bag that you'd made? Because I'd already made one. And I said, I can do better than that. I can make a picture of the one that I've actually Ooh. sent me. It took me a morning. Oh, wow. And it's just brilliant. I just love it. I mean, I, I do love crochet. Yeah. Right? So, oh, I know you do. Um, it's your passion. It's my absolute passion. But that's what um, the 10 millimeter you wouldn't normally use for this. But that's what I'm saying. Just have a play okay. and have a go. It will give a much bigger open weave. Yeah. Um, but just try it. 
just have a, have a play with what you've got at home. Susan says loves corner to corner, by the way. Uh, it says several blankets made over lockdown. I'm looking forward to the demo. Thanks, ladies, from Susan. Brilliant. Yeah, corner to corner, is, as I say, is great because you can let it grow how much you want and then you just bring it back in again. Whereas with the granny swing, you just have to keep going and going and going. Right, we're already halfway through, so we better get to the Right, demo. so the first thing that we're going to do, and this is just a granny square, we're going to start, and I'm going to start... Um, I would normally do a magic ring and all that means fix is that you create a ring you do your first stitches in the ring and you pull it tight and you have no hole in the middle okay it's quite hard to master so i just want to get to the people that have perhaps never really done it and mm -hmm. a little bit scared so what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot to start off with now this is called your tail and the bit that comes out of the wall is called your working yarn so you need to be paying attention because you'll be doing this soon yes bits. i am you i'm will. watching on the big screen so you take your tail and you place it over your working yarn. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to pull the working yarn through that loop that you've just created and pull it. I'll show you that again. So you get your tail. And people do do, there are different methods. This yeah. is the method I have. You take your tail and you place it over the working yarn and then you just feed that working yarn through the loop and pull it tight. And then now what you can see is if I pull the working yarn, that loop gets much smaller. Yeah. And we're going to do, we're going to work in trebles, which are not the first stitch that you would think that you would learn because um, a double, the, the, the smaller the stitch, you would think that's the first one, but not in this case. With granny squares, you work in trebles. So all we're going to do is we want to create a ring to put our stitches in, and we're going to chain. So with our chain, we just yarn over yarn over the hook and that's abbreviated as Y-O, so that's yarn over, and then we pull the loop over the hook. Yeah. Now that's a chain. Yeah. So we need to do four of those. So that's one, so that's two, three, four. If you don't feel comfortable with a little hole, then you can do more chains if you want to. So we're now just going to close that ring up mm -hmm. with a slip stitch in that first hole. So we put our hook in, yarn over, and a slip stitch just means that you pull both of the stitches that you had on there off. Right. Now, it's very hard to see because I have only done four chains, but that has given me a little ring. Ah, okay. In the middle. Now, that's the equivalent to a magic ring. The only difference about this is you can't pull it tight at the end. If you really didn't want a hole in the middle, and you can see from here that you've got no holes in here, because I've pulled that tight, you could always just put um, a running stitch around and pull it tight at the end with your tail. Okay. Then all we're going to do is we're going to create some trebles to go into that center ring. Now I'm holding it open so I don't lose where its place is. First thing I'm going to do is work three chains. Now a treble is quite a tall stitch. So you want to be able to get to the height that you need and that's the only reason we chain. So I've chained three and that's going to be the equivalent. Mm -hmm. Personally, I actually only chain two because I know two chains is the equivalent, but most of the patterns call for a chain three. But that, class, that counts as my first treble. We're now going to do a treble stitch back into that little hole. Now to do a treble, we do yarn over before we insert the hook into that hole. And it's really important you, insert, you put that yarn over first because that's what's gonna create the height. We put our hook inside the hole and then we yarn over and pull through. Now that leaves us three loops on the hook. Mm -hmm. We are just gonna get my tails not behaving. We're just going to do yarn over and take off the first two and yarn over and take off the second two. Now that is our treble stitch complete. Right. So you can see that my chain three is a little bit higher than that, so I would only chain two, but I'm, I'd say most patterns actually call for a chain three. So what we're doing now, we're creating, we're trying to create the inner square. I'll show you on this one actually, because you can see it. We're trying to create this little square in here. Right, yeah. So these are the sides, and then you can't see them because they've got stitches in them, but these are the corners. Mm -hmm. So the sides are made up of three trebles. So I'm going to do that again. This one counts as our first treble. Yeah. Then we've got the second one. Yarn over before we insert into the hole. Yarn over and pull through. That means that we've got three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the second two. So we've now created our first side of our square. To create the corners, 
we just chain two. Right, now we want yeah. to do our second side. So we do three more trebles. Just for this first one, the chains are corners and the, the three trebles together are our sides. So now we've created two sides and one corner. So we need to do a corner, which is a two chain. Go back in there with three trebles. Now, I did explain this all on the previous show. I can't remember when it was. Um, Julie might detail. be able to tell us. Julie um, has said, um, thank you to Wendy and Vanessa that I can now crochet my last Granny Square show. The last Granny Square show uh, Wendy guest presented on, I rewatched countless mm -hmm. times. And as she said, the light bulb moment hit. And now I'm enjoying learning more bit by bit. And it's such a versatile stitch because you can create cushions with it. You can create blankets. It really is amazing and it just takes away the frustration of working in rows because as I say most people think they need to work in rows and, and that's not the case. Start with your granny square and you'll be you'll be well away. Are you counting while you're doing this Wendy? No. No. Sorry I did. <laughs> it just does it in my head. Um, so now I've got my four sides. So each side remember is made up of three trebles yeah. and I've got three corners all made up of two chains. Okay. All I need to do now is close that square. So all that's missing is a corner VIX. Mm -hmm. So I just do a two chain to create my corner. Now, remember I did three chains at the beginning that pretended to be a treble that wasn't really a treble. Yeah. So we just do a slip stitch in the top chain of that treble and it has completed our little square. Oh, okay. So that's the first round. Yeah. They're called rounds even though we're working on a square, but yeah. when you have something that starts and finishes in the same place in crochet, it's called a round. Okay. So we've done our first round. Now, a lot of people turn over and go back the other way. I like to have a definite, almost like a plane and a pearl side on my work. So if you can see here. So can you see which is right and wrong? Are they different? I'm just trying to see all these colors. They don't, on, on the reverse side, they look a bit bobbly and then on the other side they're all nice and flat so yes you do, you do see there is a, a, almost a right and a wrong side whereas if you turn after each round you don't get that every side is the same but I like the look of that um, I don't think I'm trying to find something more clearer so what I like to do is I like to start my next round in a corner if mm -hmm. I were to start it where I finish and do a three chain it's going to stick out like a sore thumb if I take it over to the corner and hide it, it's going to hide behind the next treble. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch in the top of those trebles that were in that first treble stitch combination at the beginning mm -hmm. until I get to that first gap, which is our corner stitch, remember made up of two chains. So now I'm ready to start my next round. Exactly the same as before, Vix. Okay. You do three chain. So, so do I not need to increase more because it's a bigger square Ah, now. this is where the magic happens. Hmm. So the first one looks a bit odd because you're just creating four sides and four corners. Every time we now do a round, you'll see what I'm going to do with my corner. So I'm in a corner stitch here. So for every single corner of every single round on my square, I'm going to do three trebles. So I've done one, remember, although it's pretending to be a treble because it's a three chain. So I do three. Now that's the first half of my corner. So I'm now going to do my two chain to create my corner as we did before, but instead of going in that ring, I'm going back into the stitch where I've just come from. Now what that will do, and this is where the magic happens, Vix, it will create a corner stitch for me. So I've now got a corner. Ah. This is where, to okay. your point, so I've got four corners here. I've already done one. So I now need to do three more corners. Yeah. Every corner stitch will have three treble, two chain, three treble in that hole. Right, and is this in all in the book? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. And then we just do three treble, two chain, and three treble. Oh no, Rebecca Reed's watching. Morning, Rebecca. Morning. She says, oh, no, love the demo, Wendy and Vix. Afternoon. She says, I love the draw straight, the, uh, the oh. string bags. She says, they're gorgeous. Save me a kit. Um, I think it's actually got Rebecca's name on it, to be perfectly honest. It's lovely, isn't it? So now I've done two corners. But the eagle-eyed, if you've been paying attention, Vix, you'll see that all of a sudden a little side stitch has appeared. 
right. And, and I haven't done good. anything. No. All I've done is put corners in the corners. Okay. So I've created my side stitch. Oh, you see, your it's magic, isn't it? It is. It is magic. <laughs> and each round you do, another one appears. So it is amazing. So I'm doing my three treble, two chain, three treble into that corner space. Something's tickled cat, hasn't it? It's just, we're, we're laughing at your speed. So, I we don't know how you do it. We're all watching, watching in awe of how so you do it. I just wanted it. to get through because I want to get to the join as you go because yeah, yeah. this was all in the last demo. Okay, so, um, we can so watch this I back. think a lot of patterns ask for the join as you go method. And I Did just you say it was the 20 something of January, Kat? 27th of January it was, so we'll all be able to watch that back on YouTube. If, yeah, I, I do it a lot slower in that one. I, I just, as I say, when you, you fry it and you went, oh, we're nearly halfway through. Um, so now I've created my four corners by just doing three trebles, two chains, three trebles, all in that previous two chain space, which was my corner, remember? Right. And it's popped in a little stitch at the side for me, stitch so I don't have to do anything. Okay. And all I do is exactly the same for this and every round, is that you just go into the top of that three chain with a slip stitch. And that is, that's it. That's, that's granny square. That's a granny square. That's it. And there's, even though there's lots of different designs of how you can do, uh, there's lots of sample designs in the book, isn't there, of how to do a granny square. Yes, there so is. So there's different patterns. There is. There's hexagons. Okay. And please don't be scared about it because all it is is where you do your increases, where you do your corners, where you do your side stitches. The same stitches, though. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, don't be scared of the diagrams. A lot of people don't like working from diagrams. This one is brilliant because it actually gives you a picture of the diagrams. If you delve into the world of crochet, normally you have like a little stick with a little cross and that means one stitch and then a little oh. circle. It's very, very confusing when you have diagrams, but this one's much easier because you can actually see what the stitches are. It's wow. really, really brilliant. And then all you would do, you would just keep going round and round and it can be as big as you want. And then the only difference now is you will always have corners in the corner. Always. <laughs> I always have. The corners always stay where the corners are. Right. And they'll just go outwards. Ah, they'll yeah, go like do. a cross. Yeah. So they're my corners. So you always will do your three treble. I say two chain because I'm doing two chain. You can do one chain, you can do three chain. It mm -hmm. would just, the more chains you do in the corner, the more open mm -hmm. your um, corners will be. That's fine if that's how you want to do it. I normally do a one chain in my corner mm -hmm. because when I've then, the following round, I've got six stitches squeezing into that one corner. If I do too many chains, it makes a big hole and I like a small hole. So I tend to keep mine small. So all you, all you would do now is every time you do a corner stitch, yep. it's going to create a side stitch, which is brilliant. Okay. So you always do three treble, your chains three treble in every single corner. So there's going to be four of those stitches in every round. And then for the side stitches, Vix, you simply do three trebles in each of the spaces. Oh, okay. And that's, that's it. it. That is it. Brilliant. And then you can change colour and you can... So would you make lots of, of granny squares? or So once you've, once you've completed that, do you have to stitch them together or do you then go on to the next row? How, how is it that you bring them together? So you can either just keep going and going and going. And just and, keep going bigger and, and bigger. And just keep yeah. going. And there's a lot of pictures on the internet at the moment like scrappy blankets where people have got bits of old bits of wall left over and then they've just tied it on and then they keep going round so it's completely random and you literally just tie it on um, again I I like to tie a really loose knot work past it and then I go back and undo the knot and retie it because if you do a really tight knot you can't get it around the crochet hook ah. so again I've got another tip for doing that but these ones here these were only the first two mm -hmm. rounds so these are those Vix yeah that's those now I've used the join as you go method with these so what I did I did the first one so I made 20 of these little ones yeah and then the first one I completed and then the second one and the next and the next and the next I joined as I went right. so I didn't need to sew after and I'm going to show you how to do that now because again I think a lot of people are really scared of the join as you go mm -hmm. and it just means that as you're completing the final round of one square you join it to the next square. Ah. Um, this one, sorry I bring this one back, you will see in here I've only gone in the space with my join as you go. You can see, I don't know if it will, the camera will pick that up, you can just see every now and then uh -huh. I've got an extra bit of colour 
that's not that colour. Yeah. That's where I've joined it. Now, if I were to pull it really open weave, you can see there's little gaps there. But for a project this size, this tiny, I'm, matter, I don't no. care. But with when I'm joined and went on this one, you literally join each of the trebles to the treble on the opposite side over here. That's so cool, isn't it? So when you pull it, it's almost like you've sewn it together. Yeah, yeah. You, you can, know. if you want to, I'm not saying you have to do that, it's just the pattern called for it. You can make all your squares if you want to. Right. You can hand sew them together if you want to. Um, or you can double crochet them together, or you can slip stitch them oh, together. So there's loads of choices. There's loads and loads, but this one calls for the join as you go. And I know this one is pretty scary for a lot of people. So I've got... Susan said, good afternoon, lovely demonstration, so easy oh, to follow. I'm Many just going things. downstairs, hold on. Okay. <laughs> uh, just so you know, way over half the stock has gone in the book. We had hundreds this time. And just so you know, the greens and the pinks, which you, you can see the string bag, there's now less than 10, so they're about to sell Ooh. out. The most popular of the mini balls are oh, the lovely pastel colours. Mm. The pastel colours are gorgeous. Now, with that pattern, yeah. personally, if it was me, I would do two, I'd buy two packs okay. and I would just keep going. So I would follow the pattern for the first 18 Yes, yeah. I think it's 18 yeah. those. First 18. And then carry on. And then I would get the second and I would do exactly the same colour all the way through. So you've got a lap blanket. Oh, lovely. Because that one will be perfect, like just to lay on the floor to, not you lay on the floor, yeah. but just, <laughs> I know if you got down, you wouldn't get back up today. Oh, no, you? I know. <laughs> you've heard me doing some, oh. lots of grunting going on today. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so we're going to just show you how to join these. Now, okay. I've done. Join as you go. I've done two. I've joined those two. Um, and all we need to do is complete one row less. So on here, I've done two rounds of a three round square. With you, yeah. Because the round, the third round is going to be my join as I go round. All I'm going to do now, I love that it does your side stitch because that looks so decorative, doesn't it? And it just happens naturally. It does. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. It's like, where's that side stitch yeah. come from? And that's all that happens each time you work your corner, a side stitch comes. So I am going to do, as I would do start each round, I'm just going to slip stitch over to the corner. And I'm going to complete the first side of my stitches. So I'm just going to do a corner stitch. I prefer to do it this way. You can go st straight in and join as you go if you want to, but I prefer to actually complete one side first because I don't really want to be carrying. When you've got a massive blanket, it kind of follows you around. I love that you can talk and breathe and crochet <laughs> at the same time. It's so impressive. Uh, I, knitting, I can, don't even have to look at knitting. So, mm. um, so I'm, I've come to my side stitch. I'm glad we've got one of these in it because all that you do there is you do one set of trebles so you've got three trebles into one side stitch so that's my side stitch completed yep. and now I'm going to do my corner so I'm going to do my first half of the corner remember it's in two halves so three trebles two chain three trebles so I'm going to complete the first half then what I'm going to do instead of doing two chains I'm just going to do one chain okay I'm then going to get I'm going to place it down to where I want it to go here and then I'm going to get the corner that I need to go into, which is here. And I'm going to go in from behind and I'm just going to put it in that corner. So I've got it in the corner stitch here and I'm going to do a slip stitch. Now what that's done, that's joined that corner together. I now need to go back into that corner. You really need to think of it as two separate projects, Fix. Mm -hmm. You need to think of it as you're working your square Oh, but then I'm joining it. So now I'm forgetting about joining. I'm going to think, what do I need to do next to my square? I need to go in there three times to complete the second half of my corner. But each time I do a treble, so I'm just going to do a treble stitch. And before I do my next one in there, I'm going to go into the top Vs of the treble that's opposite it on the other on the other side. So they're your side stitches, your V's? The, the, the V's are the top of the stitch. Okay. So every time you create a stitch, you create a little V at the top. Right. So I'm just going to go in that stitch with a slip stitch. And now that has secured that stitch 
to that stitch. I need to do two more stitches in here, so I'm going to do another treble in here. But once I've done that treble, I want to marry it up with its partner on the other side. Yep. So I go into the stitch at the back with a slip stitch. And there are different methods to do it. This is just the way that I do it, yep. but there are other methods. And then I've got to do one more in that corner. It's all gone quiet, they're all listening in there, isn't it? So I'll just pull that up and you'll be able to see. So I've now given them each a partner yep. on that side. So where they were on this side, they've now partnered up with the person on the other side. Yep, that and I've sense. done my corner stitch. So now I go into, I've now got to forget about the joining and think what do I need to do next? Oh yes, I need to do three trebles in my side stitch. So I complete one treble. You must have switched the heating, uh, the air conditioning off in here, haven't you? Because I've gone all squeaky now. All my, all my stitches have gone squeaky. Don't they? Um, on. <laughs> not <laughs> um, so now I need to put it to its partner on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I do a slip stitch into there. And I've got to do two more stitches. So I do another stitch in here. Can you hear it squeaking? <laughs> I'm like a little mouse, aren't I? And then I need to go into the stitch on the other side. So I'm going, remember, in that top V, I need to do one more in that side stitch. And then again, find its partner on the other side and do a slip stitch. So now you will see that they're joined. I've joined them as I've gone. You are keeping up, aren't you? I'm going to be very impressed when you... When I've done my whole granny yeah. square, uh, yeah, my whole granny square blanket. I think with the join as you go method, it's just um, a really nice thing to, to use all your scraps up um, when you've finished a project. Make sure that you keep hold of all your little scraps of wool and just make them, even if you want to do just the first round in one colour. So this is where you can use I was going to say, really how is it small. that you change colour? How is it that you change? Uh, would you do one round and then change again? Personally, um, I don't like to join with rounds. Um, I, I wouldn't make a scrappy blanket because uh, for that very reason. Yeah. Um, and, I, and if you have a look on the show last time, I actually showed you a magic trick how to mm -hmm. actually make that three chain disappear because you do a dummy treble at the beginning, which is really exciting when you change colour. Jane asked, um, what's the best way to finish all the ends when you've got lots of colours? Right, okay. So can I have I just got time to show the corner? Yeah. Because we're just going into the corner. Now again, it's just purely preference. What I do, I will go would go in the corner that's opposite that square. Okay. So that's the square I'm doing now. So I would do my slip stitch into that corner. Yes, you might get um, if you can see on here, you get a, a little bit of a bigger stitch, but it does mean that they're all joined together. And then now, because I've joined all those sides together, I can just carry on and finish my granny square now because I've got the side join that ah. I'm yeah. So I just go round and finish that. But into your question about, um, uh, we've got one here, you see. So we've got yeah, an there's end, a big end in here. Let me just get my needle. You just get a wool darning needle and you thread it up. Now, if you're doing a magic ring, then you make sure, if pretend this is a magic ring and I've pulled it tight, then I would put it in and mm -hmm. then put the yarn round and pull it so I've secured that magic ring. I would also probably go round again. I've seen a lot of ladies mm -hmm. say that their magic rings have come undone, and mm -hmm. that's because they haven't got them secure enough. And then all you want to do, you just, I shouldn't liken it like this, Fix, because it doesn't sound very nice, but I liken to it like dropping something down the sink with the U-bend. Mm -hmm. If you don't put the tap on, it's it will just stay in there, won't it? Yeah. But if you, if so, if you wind it back and forward and back again, it's not going anywhere. Right, that buries itself completely. It's, it's completely. And a top tip when you're doing it on here, always try and find the base of the, the stitches. Because if you put it through here, it's a lot more unstable. How do I know at the base of the stitches? Right, so like? you can see where my corners yeah. have all squashed into that one yeah. stitch. There's quite a lot of stitches over a small area. Okay. I would look for somewhere like that. So I'll take them into there just to show you. So I would just place them all the way through those bottom stitches. And then I would come back. Now, when you come back, make sure you don't come back in exactly the same place as you came out. Otherwise, you're just going to undo it again. 
and then I would come back in again. Now, because that's a really dense area of wool anyway, yeah. it's not going to show. If I were to do that backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards in somewhere that was a little more open, you might see that little tail peeping out. And right. then you just cut it off, and then you just cut it off. And then because you've done it like an S, yeah, then it it's, it's not going, going to, to come back out. again. Yeah. But if you've got the side ones, make sure if you've got two, I know what the lady's saying, if you've joined, you're going to have two ends. Make sure you tie those ends off first. Don't just weave the ends in without tying them because okay. if they do come undone and they let themselves loose, they get, they're all going to unravel. So tie the ends off first. Right, there you go, Jane. Thank you for your question. Thank you ever so much. We need longer again, don't we? Do. we? we it's need... absolutely flown today, hasn't yeah. it? All day. To think, what was it, seven hours ago? Six hours? Seven? Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Thank Six you hours. so, so much. Thank you for and all of good, my lovely good luck. treats. I, I don't think I, well, I'm not seeing you on the 19th, oh. am I? So, but I shall be Thank watching you. you. Don't yeah, you oh, worry. absolutely. We'll keep in contact. Yeah. Thank and you as birthday, always. And happy birthday, Kieran. Happy birthday. Oh, that's lovely. Um, I was also going to say, when will we see you back then? The 19th. 19th. Thank you for today. Yeah. There's been so many lovely uh, I've had a lovely I've comments. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, so just so you know, when we launched this book, um, there was, I can't remember how many, but if, if we'd have seen... If we'd have had the same amount, it would have sold out twice over already today. If you've got it in your basket, please do not wait any longer. Check out now. Granny Squares, there's loads of different designs, lots of different projects, step-by-step -step diagrams, as well as Wendy's instructions from today. Don't forget, you can um, you can watch down, you can jot down today's date and watch back on YouTube. It's $14.99, which is brilliant. I think Rebecca bought enough of these in to be able to keep them in stock for a while and it looks like it's going to sell out again very quickly. So just be aware, there's some really lovely designs in here. $14.99, there's the bag that we were talking about. Um, there's felted bags, there's loads of projects, absolutely loads. That's the, um, the computer case, the tablet case that, that Wendy was looking at as well. So all of your techniques of how to do your granny square, where to get started, can't recommend it enough. This is 20 crochet projects with a vintage vibe. Uh, now, finally got that back in stock. We've got the cottons. Now, as Wendy was saying, just to remind you, they are really, really soft. Those of you that have worked with cottons before and been put off, if they're a bit too rigid, Give these a go. These are your cotton soft crush. You've got your variegated cotton for £12.99. Um, and sometimes, I know that Wendy was saying earlier on, normally she wouldn't recommend for newbies going with a cotton, whereas this one, absolutely go for it. It is super soft, lovely quality and great value for money. Bearing in mind, with three balls, you can do um, one of the shawls and you could do one of the bags. I mean, depending on your tension and depending on um, depending on what crochet hook you're using, what size crochet hook, but generally it's gonna go a long, long way. And you've got that look of changing colors without having to change colors, which is brilliant. So they're the blues. We've also got uh, the pink and the green's gone. Literally last to stop now if you want the pinks and greens, that beautiful fruity fruity we're calling it, tutti fruity. Um, it's your floral spring shopping bag yarn pack you get all three finally the neutral colors this is what we made the uh i can't say we wendy made the pirate not why do you say pirate cowboy style scarf look at that and this is again same stitch same stitch this is your granny stitch but this time done increasing 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 and then when you get to the size that you want you can decrease you can do blankets all sorts um multi-buy on these because the variegated colours are beautiful. They really, really are. Uh, double knit, 100 grams of your cotton yarn. Just £12.99. Okay, all three for £12.99. We also have the mini yarns. Look at these lovely bright colours. You've got your rainbow. They've called it dark and they're not. They're really rainbow bright colours. We've got rainbows and we've got pastels. So we saw earlier on, we were all absolutely stunned by how much Wendy made from this. Uh, they're all 10 gram acrylic yarn mariner balls and they're so much fun to play around with uh, if you are doing a beautiful blanket or whether you want to do um, lots of mini projects from the book stock up your stash for 5.99 brilliant price we also have the pastels which are, again are absolutely beautiful and you could make with just this for 5.99 
Look at how lovely this blanket is. We've got Wendy's pattern. It has almost sold out, but I would be multi-buying on these because then you could carry on the rows and keep going and keep going and keep going um, and make an even bigger blanket. Uh, that comes from the granny stripe blanket pattern from Wendy Orlando. If you do want to make the most of that, that is again at a brilliant price point of five pounds. Um, no, it wasn't five ninety nine, was it? Three ninety nine. Pattern is $3.99 today as well. So do make the most of that. All of um, Wendy's instructions on there. We've seen Wendy playing around with, of course, different hook sizes. If you want to have a look on the website, have a look on the shop because there's so much there. And of course, everybody who purchases on the website, you're entered into two prize draws. So make the most of that. It's been the most epic week um, across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. First birthday, I must say. We have parted pretty hard, haven't we? I don't know how we're going to top that first birthday. Let's see what the next year has in store for us. Um, but thank you all from the bottom of our heart for all of you um, for, for supporting us over the last year. It's been amazing. And that's from everyone behind the scenes as well. I know that Rebecca Reed will be here bright and early tomorrow morning from eight o'clock. So please do jo join her with Jude. And I will see you on Tuesday. See you then.